recording. So welcome everybody. Thank you, Tommy, for filing in so quickly. Um, uh, you know, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Um, we're here for the Stacks Governance Working Group call number 63. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, we usually start with some standups from folks. Um, uh, you know, whether it's you know, governance related or slightly governance related, we're, we're all ears to folks that I want to give us some brief updates of what they've been up to. Um, you know, you can go through any blockers that folks uh, foresee and, and what will happen over the, the next uh, couple of weeks if, if there's anything for us exciting. So, um, so yeah, uh, I, I can start um, uh, kick us off. Uh, we've been doing a, a whole lot of uh, uh, work in the in the advocates um, pause, especially uh, heads down, hacking away at um, our consensus flow um, in terms of decision making. Um, and uh, I think in the last meeting we covered where we were on some of the initial stages of this, where um, uh, Haas has really made it digestible uh, for folks um, coming in, not even having to get them onboarded into policy kit, um, which wraps around a Discord server and allows for some. Uh, um, uh, a, a fair amount of um, uh, expressiveness or expressivity in, in how we design the structures of a, of a Discord or the decision-making structures of a Discord server, um, but also, uh, you know, just our own structures for governance and, and system design. So uh, this has uh, been really, really exciting, uh, you know, building in what we've learned from indigenous modes into the tooling and uh, what may be, you know, fairly subtle ways, if you're not familiar with some of our discussion, um, but it's been a real, real uh, uh, pleasure to, to see um, all of the ways that Haas has uh, taken our conversations and built them into the tooling. And the same consensus flow tooling uh, in recent weeks has started to come over into our task creation efforts. And we've had some good discussions around uh, some of the initial design of this has finally gotten some things down on paper and Haas has started hacking away at, at making these things possible um, in terms of folks uh, organizing into what we're calling micro DAOs in terms of distribution of funds and whatnot for, for task creation that folks can come together on. But we'll also be bringing over some of the tooling of the consensus flow in terms of the, the bottom up quorums uh, capacities so we can uh, bring some horizontality and, and hopefully some system design into task creation uh, rather than just some of the conventional structures. We'll also be wrapping some things around um, the, that, that broader, um, uh, I, I guess, task creation program within advocates um, to really, really uh, emphasize um, intrinsic motivations, uh, commons-based systems design over, over product design and, and these type of things. And we're really excited about the connections to this and, and the grants program, uh, the ambassadors program, and um, allowing for this to be where a lot of robust complexity in terms of you know, preserving community core values um, in the, for the long term, uh, open source convictions, privacy convictions, and things like this um, don't get drowned out in the long term, right? Um, but also, new voices don't get drowned out either, right? And so, um, this is something that Hero has been um, uh, a big help in engine and conversation on, and it's something that I, I know Jason, you've been hearing uh, Haas and myself talk about for quite some time. So. Um, uh, it's been beautiful to see Haas um, get out these, uh, you know, uh, proof of concepts, even in, in terms of sending funds, um, uh, creating DAOs, uh, but I'll, I'll let um, Haas get into uh, some of that um, even further. But, um, uh, you know, blockers to, to, to using some of this stuff isn't so much. Um, I think that uh, we've gotten a lot of our most active um, advocates um, onboarded into what, how we're thinking about system design for the advocates, um, onboarded into you know uh, important you know, concepts uh, around governance, and um, uh, now it's just a matter of um, folks using these temporary clan designations that folks have started to come into, um, and making use of the consensus flow tooling with uh, some of our uh, indigenous governance design models uh, atop of it. And uh, this is what's really beautiful about uh, the tooling so far is um, the, the, our ability to pick it up and use it um, alongside some of our system design models. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll shut up. Uh, um, and the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll probably be seeing uh, more um, use of this with the advocates for, for different, different things um, as we have already started to integrate um, some of this tooling into the main server, um, thanks to Haas using some of our old flows to do this. 
Um, and so, yeah, that's probably what will be happening over the next couple of weeks. But um, yeah, I'll shut up now and see um, whatever updates we have from folks. And whoever would like to go can go, or uh, we can go down the list as well. All right, I'll, I'll jump in and share mine real quick. Not a ton of updates related to the work we're doing here, but some cool stuff that was inspired by it. So with CityCoins in particular, um, we're going through a community voted upgrade right now. And a lot of the governance process and some of the initial stuff we put in place was inspired by a lot of the work that we do here and some of the work done on the SIPs for the Stacks blockchain. So I really appreciate that. But even more so, there's been this idea floating around of where the whole CityCoins concept could evolve to next. And uh, Patrick put out a blog post, so we call it CityCoins 2.0, but definitely this idea of how DAOs can reach consensus and do decision making and everything else is going to play a really big role in how things are designed. And it's definitely something like I have my ear to as part of this project because I've always loved what we're doing here. Um, so with that, like over the next, I'd say two weeks to two months, three months, we're, we're going to be really exploring and deep diving into this concept of like what it would look like for cities to self-organize small DAOs that would be able to have a, a representation of both voting and like a stake in the treasury and what some of this would look like so that there could be a faster way to get from implementation to actual usage of the funds. Um, so a lot of the work being done, like again, I, I can't echo enough like how proud I am of you guys for like doing all this because it's laying the foundation so that when we go to look at something like this, we can turn back and look at the work that's been done between advocates and governance and everything else and say, wow, here are the pieces of the model that we want to take out. Here are the things that are going to work. And a lot of inspiration for me personally definitely comes from the work being done here. So just wanted to share that. That's exciting to tell as always um, see what's going on in city coins and, and to see the uh, the recursivity, I guess, of of, uh, of the network, right? In terms of um, you know all the things we're we're learning from each other, uh, to be fair. Um, and so yeah, this is um this is a beautiful process. Uh, it's surreal in a lot of ways, to, to be honest. So thank you, Connie, for that update. It, it, it's huge and beautiful to to hear you know uh, some of the community um, gathering and you know possibly you know public procurement avenues. It seems like right um, that are that are emerging in, in city coin. So so thank you, Connie, for for keeping us keeping us uh, up to date. Um, all those exciting things um but yeah uh uh hero has um shenka um if you have anything for us let us let us know merrick i see you as well I can go. Uh, so recently we've been working with um, the journeys um, system and a component uh, of that is uh, like people coming together to discuss like the discussion tools and the discussion space um, based on um, and and then like drafting the grant and the grant um well, I uh, there's a lot of action going on in your in your background that was i don't know maybe maybe you can uh increase it and it can help a lot but um it's really really hard to, to make I, I think i can make out what you're saying just because I'm, I'm familiar with the words <laughs> but, but I, i'm sure other folks may be having a hard time but um let us know um if uh, you can you, you can try again maybe with increased noise cancellation and, and we'll see. Sorry though. And no worries. <laughs> that sounds like a good restaurant. Uh, still bad, right? Not so bad. Not, not so bad. No. Not, not so bad. Not so bad. Still not perfect, but that's bad. Oh, that's, <laughs> it's increasing. It, it, it can probably add in the uh, I'll try again, but it stopped me in like five seconds or whatever. Um, so, uh, discussion, um, grant writing, and payment. Payment is the part we sorted uh, because it's like the, the part that, I, that can actually be uh, poly, polymorphic 
uh, in terms of just like being used in in, uh, in a lot of in a lot of scenario, scenarios. Um, so we started with the concept of micro DAOs. The current DAOs that exist on Stacks are too complicated. Um, um, or either either are um, um, what's it called? Uh, imports from different chains, or they do they, they do not have like financial implications at least yet. That is. Um, the two DAOs that I know of are Alex and Arkadiko. Uh, other than that, we, uh, I, I have not seen any DAOs on Stacks, um, at least on chain. Uh, and Quaker uh, has been working on Clarity DAO, which is an implementation of Moloch. Um, that I, I decided to just like start with like a simple implementation. 200 lines contract that allows people to create their DAOs with members uh, whose uh, governance power isn't transferable. And, uh, and which is um, uh, simple enough to get started with like small teams and uh, at first i was just like thinking of helping the people who are doing journeys with the, these grants but then just like as as, as i've started working on this project um it it kind of dawned on me how fractal this can get the funny thing with contracts is that a principal can be a, a person's address uh, or a contract address. So what that means is uh, in the current implementation, you can create a funding proposal that gets executed if no dissent is presented um, in five days. The same thing can is that the, the funding proposal can go to a contract address. This can mean that we might create either an upgradable contract at worst, um, like if it upgrades from the old DAO contract to a new DAO contract in five days when the funds are sent there, uh, or at worst, uh, sorry, at best, um, a network of DAOs. Um, this this is this is gonna be this might be um, a bit complicated. But basically, if uh, if a team needs some value from another team, um, they can just like create a funding proposal for the other team from their DAO um, to the to that other DAO, um, and th that's that's what I mean when I when I, I'm talking about like a network uh, of uh, DAOs. Um, and uh, the the implementation of the of the micro DAO, as I said, this is like two hundred lines of code, uh, clarity code. Um, it's so simple that it's I think it's 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 good for fractaling um, um, systems or fractals uh, in general where. Uh, small teams can get bigger and just like become uh, multiple DAOs uh, with their own governance rules. But yeah, this this is this is something I'm excited about, especially in the design uh, and the possibilities that this can can provide. The the, the design also is accessible. Uh, right now, in the in the deprecated server, anybody can create their own micro DAO with like uh, a Discord command slash spectacular micro DAO create. Uh, what they need is like is, is you don't you don't even have to add members. <laughs> you can just add yourself. Um, as you want to add members, you can just like use people who have uh, their BNS name as their as their nickname or username. That's how easy this is. Um, and uh, Discord will give you a link to deploy that contract. And then through, through Discord as well, you're going to have like a list of DAOs to deposit to. So you don't have to go to you're still in Discord. And uh, right now, I'm, I'm working on, on, the, on the, two, 
the last two functions, uh, the create funding proposal and the execute funding proposals. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's exciting, to say the least. But um, it's 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 gonna be fun, fun uh, super fun to see how um, interdao um, uh, workflows happen or if they happen. But yeah, check. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Thank you. Well, I think you came through just just enough um, for us to, to digest what you said there, and it, yeah, it's it's surreal, and exciting uh, to say the least. Um, if folks ha haven't tried, uh, haven't had a chance to try out, um, uh, or don't have access to that deprecated server that that Haas is uh, talking about, uh, Shankar, you may be one of the only folks here um, not familiar with this. Um, let me know if you if you'd like, or we we can get a um, a link for you um, right away so that you can start tinkering with what's going on in there. And as Ha said, it's, um, it's ridiculously easy um, uh, to uh, you know send funds to, to, to different uh, folks just with the BTC name. Um, uh, the, the prompts in the command line are, are just uh, as easy as can be. Um, and uh, uh, the create a DAO uh, prompts, I'd imagine Charles is just uh, rounding off on now um, uh, in recent days. Um, is, is pretty easy as well, including adding numbers, as he said, um, and, um, you know, being able to plug this into flows and, and grants, uh, ambassadors program or what have you, um, it, it would be a beautiful thing in terms of accessibility. Um, and, uh, you know, not to mention all of the implications for on and off chain um, processes, as Haas mentioned. Um, also, you know, the, the terminology of micro DAOs in, in uh, reference to distribution of funding I, I uh, uh, you know, started to really like just in just in context of uh, our consensus flow and, and other governance system design efforts, which really feels like a more robust um, uh, approach to DAOs, right? Um, uh, more around the autonomous organization of things, uh, bottom up accessibility and things like this. And so, uh, you know, having the uh, journeys or task creation uh, node and advocates um, uh, also makes for the capacity to plug folks in whenever, you know, more uh, uh, um, complex governance issues arise, right, in uh, for structures of, of the task creation uh, model or within uh, DAOs themselves, right, there would be a, a capacity to plug right into our consensus flow. Um, which is, you know, thought about all of the you know, potential, you know, thought about governance for quite some time now. And, um, you know, uh, could be a, a, a nice means of uh, exposing folks to, to um, sustainable governance, right, or having a, an easy plug and play um, for folks who maybe their only point of contact in advocates may be, uh, you know, what's emerging in this task creation or journeys um, uh, flow. And so yeah, uh, really excited, Haas, thank you kindly for for getting into the, the details of, of what's been going on technically um, to, to get these these, these betas out. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, please, please, if folks haven't tried, uh, I, uh, it'll blow your mind um, what's going on in that deprecated server. And it's already being integrated into the main server. But um, but yeah, thank you kindly, Haas. Thank you kindly. Um, but yeah, Hero, Hero, you've been with us for, for some time. Uh, feel free to pass or give us some updates if you'd like. Um, Shankar, it's, a, it's beautiful to have you, Merrick. No, I'm just listening today. Um, like, uh, I would like to add a next meeting. Beautiful, beautiful. No worries. Thank you kindly for, for your ears and your time. Um, and yeah, hopefully this is this is uh, sparking some things for yourself as well. But um, but yeah, uh, Hero or Merit, do you have any stand-ups for us before we, we get into some discussion or whatnot? Uh, is my audio coming through on me? I haven't tested it yet. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Uh, not really stand up for me. The last two weeks have been pretty busy with some family health stuff, which is going well. But yeah, so, uh, um, but that has been taking pretty much all my time. Uh, I have been tinkering a little bit with the mind test stuff. Uh, no longhouse. Just talking about having that out, uh, like a little demo kind of two weeks from now. I don't know if that'll be possible. We'll see, but uh, uh, yeah, super pumped for all this stuff. I've been like, uh, looking at some of these smart contracts that uh, I've been writing. Very exciting, but yeah, nothing really 
stand up and like that. Thank you kindly. Um, here, I think you're the only one of us that hasn't met. Do you have, do you have anything for us if you'd like? I don't know what I can um, add. Just, I guess, in the past few weeks, just, um, yeah, I think I'm um, just really happy and grateful to um, to be getting more involved in the stats advocate and happy to see some of you guys took on the the body onboarding thing flow uh i hope it's going well i i i purposely um wanted you guys to try it then <laughs> then me, myself just like um thinking that's um yeah I, I think it's always good to get feedback so i guess yeah in the past few weeks just um very happy to be doing more stuff with you guys and I find this whole place, like Gov Lab, super fascinating. I just think it's such a, it's brewing like some super like innovative stuff from this place. So um, yeah, very, very, very cool. Thank you, Kami Hero. No, uh, we're, we're, we can't express the gratitude for you, your efforts leading the way in, in the, that buddy flow for folks coming into advocates and um, already experienced folks using it, but right? um, uh, you know, feeling comfortable to be proactive in asking questions, uh, feeling their way around uh, the system design. So, um, you know, thank you kindly for it's already being uh, it's already been effective. You know. Uh, so, so thank you kindly for that. I don't, I don't think it, it can be overstated how important that is for system design, encouraging the real time meetings or uh, the interpersonal relationships, right? Just when you have the uh, the means to 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 connect to people. So, so thank you kindly, Hero. Um, uh, you know, uh, it, it's been a huge, huge help. Uh, I'd imagine going forward as well, it'll be it'll have a one of the biggest impacts for us. Um, so, thank you kindly. Um, but yeah, I think we can get into um, a little bit of what we usually discuss uh, in terms of uh, issues here. Um, uh, maybe we we don't have much to discuss without Juliet and some of these things. But um, I know uh, Jason usually likes to ensure that folks are aware of uh, you know how important this particular topic is, right? Around uh, community board seat. Uh, Juliet has really been doing a lot of the pioneering work uh, around. Uh, what this particular position looks like um, and has been doing has had some quite evolved thinking on it as of late that um, I believe she will be trying to bring into the fray fairly soon. Um, she's not with us today, but um, she'll be back with us sometime in, in June, if I'm not mistaken, based on uh, some messaging from her today. Um, but yes, uh, this is a extremely important position in terms of uh, uh, community representation and it's, uh, you know, uh, relationship or connection uh, processes with the board of the Stacks Foundation. Um, I don't know if there's any uh, questions around this from any folks that are interested or if there's any additions uh, to things that I, I may have missed. <clears throat> but um, maybe we can go ahead. Somebody stop me if I should be spending more time. Right? Um, and then we have some action items here. Um, I think the, I think these we've kind of discussed already a little bit before from some uh, issues from uh, Jojo in relation to um, uh, deprecating some of the um, Stacks Advocates repo or having it at least, I think we settled on having it visible, um, but uh, some pointers to some of the more active repos that um, we're using for advocates. If I'm not mistaken, uh, folks can let me know if I'm missing anything here as well. Flow, flow is always open. But, I, um, I'm updating it right now because that slipped off my radar. Okay, okay, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, um, and I know this was something from you as well, Jason, in terms of just themes and, and the look and polishing of, of, uh, of um, you know, what uh, some of our project management looks like here on GitHub. Um, and uh, uh, we could have pages, if I'm not mistaken, right? So um, I think we've discussed this uh, quite a few times now. I don't know if you want to uh, go through some of that again, Jason. But um, I think uh, uh, 
we have this here too for folks like Shankar, who um, may not uh, have seen us go through this in these sessions already, um, where uh, we're still very much um, uh, looking for people to come into these uh, consideration, uh, consider advisory boards, right? Um, in terms of looking at SIPs that are relevant to governance or ethics or um, you know economics, right? Uh, and uh, myself, Jason, and uh, Juliet have been a part of this process when it comes to previous SIPs that uh, fall within the scope of governance. And um, we're always, uh, I think, um, going to be at least in the near future looking for folks who are interested in in uh and you know coming into these processes of their own right if they're passionate about um you know tracking the the different um events going on in the ecosystem different uh, you know updates to technology and what have you that that may affect uh the the, the, the ecosystem in different ways right so uh let me know if i'm missing anything here you guys um or if there's any questions from shankar hero um, folks that uh, have been around for a while now and pretty um, consistent, right? These these would be um, uh, you know, Merrick as well, right? These, these would be some nice uh, ways of ensuring, you know, you know you, whatever you're passionate about or convicted about in terms of the ecosystem, um, uh, you know, you can have your eyes and voice included here uh, and, and share things to the ecosystem as well after, after looking it over. So it's a fairly important function um going forward if folks are interested yeah definitely i don't i i understood it well thank you yeah. beautiful beautiful i'm glad I, is I that is that for like um stacks 2.1 or 2.2 upgrade like blockchain um soft fork or hard fork stuff yeah if it falls within the scope of the whatever advisory board that um uh you know that you're in right um if i'm not mistaken right um jason we we did look over some of these changes that you're mentioning hero because it it did fall within the scope of governance for example so yeah you're, you're precisely right yeah and I'm, I'm pulling up the information but basically in sip 000 that describes the governance process of the stacks blockchain and like how the software moves there's this idea of a consideration board and a consideration advisory board is basically a group of people that get together under the technical economic governance ethics or diversity groups and um, new ones can be added as well, but those are the ones that exist now. So if we're creating a SIP that affects, uh, for example, the blockchain and the way it functions well more than likely there's going to be a technical and a governance tag to that. And this would be each board exists once three people sign up for it. Um, so once there's three people on a board, any SIP that has that consideration tagged would then be reviewed by that group and they would share their opinion publicly. So it's just a way for more people to have input on the official changes that come through. Uh, but it's a, a little more of a commitment because you have to actually like, read through the SIPs and you know see that things get done in a timely manner. But so far the process, uh, there's not a ton of SIPs out there and this is like evolution of the core parts of the blockchain. So if that's something that interests you, there's um, definitely room for others to be added and you could exist in any of those categories or if you think there should be a new category that can be submitted as well. Cool, um, thanks for explaining. Is that quite technical? Like uh, when you have to read through the documents, like um, they are more like codes and stuff, or are they more like descriptive? Um, no, much more descriptive. These are kind of the long form description of how things work. So they can get technical. Um, you know, when you look at the SIPs, for example, that define how the blockchain operates, you're going to see things like how a block is assembled and how you know, all the little details come together, but the idea of the consideration advisory boards is to give you a scope in which to review the SIP. So if you're on the ethics board, for example, and you're looking at a SIP, you're really just looking at, from my ethics perspective, do I think this is acceptable? So that separation does help as well. Like even if you had to review something technical, um, you would be looking at it from that type of scope or a SIP that is entirely technical and doesn't touch anything ethical, isn't even going to be required for review by that cab because it just doesn't apply. So it's just, um, it, it depends on what SIPs and what kind of changes come through. And you can see those at any time on the StacksGov SIPs repo. I'm going to drop a link here as well. 
all of the pull requests represent SIPs that are being worked on and considered as like, is this something we want to include in the blockchain? So this is sometimes where you'll see new features. This is where eventually we'll also see the uh, code of conduct and, and things like that come through in the official form and, and get ratified. Cool. Um, so just because I'm, I don't know much about this, just a, another question. So is there somebody who like, uh, I'm kind of interested from a user's end user perspective, the community um, people side of things. Um, is there currently already like somebody viewing from that perspective or representing that perspective or that voice? Yeah, I'm looking back through these definitions here. I get the um, I get the feeling that would fit very well under the diversity consideration advisory board. And all it takes to join one of these boards is basically you open an issue here in GitHub. And if uh, if you don't have a GitHub account, you can reach out to me. I can help you with that as well. But you open an issue and just say, hey, I want to join this board, and you need an email address. Um, so that'll kind of kick off the process and um, overall i would guess yeah if you look at the link i shared that has the sip considerations you can see a little bit of a definition for each one that's been created so far cool i think um yeah i'll take a look i think um yeah i think I, i'm just very interested to have the voice and like that's probably why it interests me the um, stacks advocate like to have to let people have this i think as in like the the super end user side like the really like people in those com this schools are you know they don't even know some of these things exist if they if there's a way to yeah to have um a perspective from their side could be uh very interesting to yeah i don't know <laughs> Definitely. I, I recommend just start start with that link. And then if you, you know, if it's something you want to check out, then you would just file that issue. But if you have any questions along the way, just shoot me a ping as well. Cool. Thanks. Who's the next closest person who is um who is being similar position or looked at it from that perspective? If there has been. Um, sure. So out of the SIPs that have come through, I have not seen one that's um, gone down that track, but it is, it's something that, you know, like until these consideration advisory boards are filled with three members and officially started and created, everything is technically handled by the steering committee, which is run by the Stacks Foundation. So okay. um, as more people get interested in, you know, having the three in a group that look at diversity or look at ethics or look at governance. All oh, right then as those sips come up they, then you'd be someone to review them and in general it's just kind of nice to be tapped into some of the work being done uh from the future yeah. perspective as well yeah 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 even if you um i'm not reviewing it but to to see it like um happening right yeah and i know you like to stay on top of things too so this is another place for you to look cool thanks a lot I need both here and in Jason uh, for all the support there. Um, uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, exchanges there. I'm glad we, we go over it so folks, um, you know, that aren't familiar with this being here um, can file in, hopefully, right? I know, like you said, um, Jason Hero loves to stay on top of things and you know, fairly proactive so far in the ecosystem, along with others. So it's definitely a, a point of accessibility in a lot of ways. And uh, love your 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 take on it, right? Um, in terms of thinking about you know, the accessibility of voice. Um, so yeah, thank you kindly, uh, Hero. Um, so yeah, I, I think we have some of this work here from from Juliet. I, I think we'd have to get um, updates from her on on um, you know where she's at with it. I know she dedicated some of her time away from this to getting uh, uh, an advocate's code of conduct up and and vetted by folks. So. Um, I think where she left off, if I'm not mistaken, is um, integrating uh, some of the, the work that she's been doing and requests for comments that she's been asking for into our consensus flow in advocates as a means of, of getting this out to, to the community in a, in a, in a tangible way or, or effective way. 
but uh, we'd have to get more information from her, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, on updates here. And um, we spent a, a large part of the meeting today um, giving some updates on what's been going on in, uh, in advocates and decision-making testing. And here's some nice updates taken from uh, the updates in the residency where we're showing right, a little bit of what's happening here. Um, just in this thread, right, the, the author of this thread updates, uh, you know, um, the thread and the latest update gets, you know, made into a, a document uploaded to policy kit, which then allows for, you know, uh, on chain, um, uh, you know, interactions if we wanted to, or pointers to off chain uh, processes that are happening here in discord. Um, and this is a little bit of uh, um, a user's experience that Haas was mentioning earlier today. Um, some flowcharts for folks to to show what uh, some of the exciting autonomous processes for the voices of women will look like um, um, following our, our consensus flow tooling. Um, uh, and um, there's just some uh, little, um, uh, you know, exciting nuances there around streamlining of not just bottom-up voices, uh, the edges of any given system, but, uh, but also uh, streamlining of... Um, uh, distributed power between um, uh, men and women in decision-making processes, um, uh, where there's this communication in what is the bulk of the consensus process and these preliminaries and a formalization in the, in the formal uh, councils or meetings. Um, there's also the communication between the male and female representatives during the, the, the month's time that uh, leading up to the formal formalization of what's happening in the prelims consensus. And so there's this autonomy preserved all the way up until the coming together um, in the final consensus process. And then there's even more intricate nuances in terms of um, the way that the clans are positioned in the physical sense, um, uh, you know, when they're meeting physically, um, uh, that, uh, you know, there's even more intricate mechanisms of autonomy for um, not just women, but matrilineal heritage altogether, right, ecosystems and, and whatnot, right, regenerative um, sustainability. Right. And, uh, and and so this is um, you know, very exciting to say the least, uh, some more flow charts showing um, what's happening in a particular council process uh, oversimplified way um, and some more updates as to what's been going on inside of advocates in terms of consistent um, uh, you know uh, sense making sessions um, going in a little bit into what's happening in journeys connections that were mentioned earlier but um, but yeah um, there's some some nice stuff for folks to plug into and probably get a link to the deprecated server for folks included here so folks can plug in and, and tinker as well but there's already been some integrations into the main server um uh for for this consensus flow as well um i don't, I don't know if you want to mention anything else um that i'm forgetting there's, there's just a, a whole lot of exciting things going on in, in the details of this as well so um i, I guess we'll leave the floor open for any questions or or anything as well Um, a big part of this, I will say, it, it, it shows um, some of the, the subtle ways that Haas is building in uh, what we're learning from Indigenous modes, uh, in addition to just the, the, the models that we're using, but actually it's being built into the tooling. Um, uh, you know, having a descent-based uh, flow uh, is something directly taken from the dialogue that uh, you know, it's been beautiful to see Haas build in, not just to the, this consensus flow, but even in some of his thinking around micro DAOs and the differences in how the grant flow can be when, with this communication between contracts, really emphasizing uh, both consensus rather than splitting folks with votes, right? Um, allowing folks the capacity to come to consensus first, which is something you know, directly um, learned from the longhouse, but also um, uh, this sense, this motif of autonomy, right, is being built into uh, the way that, uh, uh, you know, the grant flow is happening, right, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the contract flow, uh, you know, a lot of it being a uh, uh, generator of value side um, in terms uh, of uh, um, distributions or setting parameters of the contracts and things like this. So it's been a beautiful thing to see uh, those subtle things um, from Haas. Uh, very grateful um, for the way he's been approaching uh, this tooling so far. But um, but yeah, I'll shut up now um, and um, leave any updates for folks. There's a long history 
of our um are coming up into this if folks are interested as well but um but yeah i'll shut up um yeah uh i think this is uh some of our uh domain discussion that uh um jason has been mentioning for a while trying to get folks to uh come together on uh you know whether or not you know we should have a, a prettier much more i guess digestible domain if I'm not mistaken right jason yeah, just um, I, I registered stacksgov.com. I'm happy to point it, uh, point what we have to it or something else. But the, the bigger question is like, who should own it and how should that go? And I'm, I'm happy to do it for as long as we need it. Like, it's not a problem, but just to like have those questions ahead of time. And was this something we should do? Or, you know, should it be on the stacks.org website, which was where we were kind of headed originally. But since we're a separate group from them, I think it makes sense to have our own domain name. So this is really not um, not anything big. It's just something that needs to be done. So it's more being kept track of in that sense. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you kindly, Jason. Um, let's see. We have discussion items, maybe. Yeah, so uh, I think this is a lot of where uh, conversation of our in our last meeting we went around and we touched on what was coming up uh, uh, um, apparently a lot sooner than we expected from have in terms of uh, this tuning to what we're calling journeys or task for within advocates and um, uh, like I said hopefully this is some, some fairly explicit bridge work uh, to ambassadors in the grants program allowing for ideation and you know some carved uh, paths for community support when it comes to funding um, even up to residency level things right um, which is being built into the, the ambassadors program if I'm not mistaken right folks being able to evolve in terms of the, the type of grant funding that they that they're receiving and um, uh, I know this is uh, maybe uh, maybe I, don't, I think we'd have to have Philip here with us to get his his, uh, his insights on uh, exactly how he's feeling about community funding streams. But I know this is something that uh, myself, Haas, and Jason, right, in terms of task creation, um, have been excited about for some time. And uh, with the pace that Haas is at in terms of <laughs> the, what, he, what, we're, what he's calling distacular, this combination of, of Discord interacting with, uh, with, the, with the chain, um, but also interacting with Policy Kid. Uh, and um, uh, you know this dissent votes, or uh, you know allowing for uh, things to change in terms of distribution or structure changes in, in funding proposals. So um, uh, I think this is hopefully really exciting for folks like Philip if you watch the recording of this uh, in terms of some bottom up or horizontal means to uh, stimulating community funding, right? Um, and also a, a point of transformative potential for uh, folks coming into the grants program, being exposed to some of the core value preservation that's built into the system design of advocates. Right? So um, I think that, that that maybe sums up, you know, where we can pick up, ne pick up next time if Philip is here or if anybody else has any comments or questions around um, what Philip was uh, trying to get us some dialogue about here. But I'm uh, excited to, to, to share this with Philip as soon as we, we get the chance, maybe can catch in between these meetings as well uh, to make for better discussion when we come together. But yeah, um, I'll leave the floor open for folks if there's any common questions on this. Um, and then I think we had a little bit of uh, feedback from uh, uh, folks at Hero. And yeah, it looks like there's some discussion happening here between Frieger and hero. Uh, okay, so we're asking, it looks like it's ready to be closed out after they had some, some good discussion here. Um, so yeah, I don't know, uh, Jason, or if anybody else can wrap their heads around what's being discussed here a little bit better than myself, but. Um, sure, sure. So yeah, just looking, um, just looking at the question, like one of the questions was, does Hero PPC own the copyright on stacks.js? And stacks.js is a JavaScript library that we use to interact with the blockchain. So if you're sending transactions or making a website or using connect to pop up the wallet window, like you definitely use this 
software before and um, they were just curious the, the question more so was like how did things transition from the original block stack pvc that dissolved and onto hero or some of the other areas um, so with that the reply from the walker here is basically saying it's it's licensed under the mit license um, so that is uh, means it's anybody can copy it anybody can use it or anything like that and other than that there was no um transfer of actual intellectual intellectual property which is what this sounds like but that's a kind of like a fine nuanced term too like basically the when you're looking at open source software a lot of the ways you consider if you can make a copy of it or if you can use it in your own code is to go off of the software license and i think that's what um the walker is more asking for here and uh, just some clarification to make sure that people are also not confused by the naming of the issue or anything else. So that's an easy thing we can clean up. Thank you, Conley. Uh, Jason, I, I guess uh, some pretty important things here and, and I guess clarification between Frieger and DeWalker. Um, so yeah, thank you, Conley, for, for making it clear. Um, and yeah, um, uh, see, I think, I think this maybe could be closed out and or I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I, I think there's a lot of uh, overlap with what's going on in, in this issue and what's going on in uh, the SACS decision making issue, but I guess maybe there's still some uh, room for this issue to be open uh, for, for updating folks on what's going on in the GovLab. Um, I think a big um, uh, a big update, uh, you know, dovetails with what we've been discussing here, and uh, it's the use of you know what uh, Haas has been working on uh, to make things in the tr in the gov level a little bit more transparent, right? Um, uh, also, some points of accessibility for folks who want to collaborate with the gov lab. Um, it can be included in uh, you know this task creation flow, and so uh, you know maybe this is something that uh, we start to update this particular issue with in the future. So maybe maybe we leave it open. Uh, for things beyond just decision making or govern or, or um, uh, governance, but going into what's happening in the gov lab, uh, yeah, maybe uh, we'll leave the floor open for any questions or comments folks have around uh, what's going on in the gov lab, right? Uh, beyond uh, uh, the decision making or things that we discuss heavily here. Um, there's a whole other side of, it, of indigenous efforts, right? That that we um, sometimes touch on in these sessions too. Um, and so here, uh, you know, maybe there's uh, um, some some overlap, right? There is definitely some overlap between what, what was just mentioned too, right? In terms of journeys and, and task creation, um, this is the the point of uh, conversation between um, uh, uh, Jason and and, our, and ourselves in terms of what's coming up now. Um, and so uh, maybe this gets closed out uh, or um, or renamed. Uh, in terms of um, uh, bringing in some uh, 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 some of the flows right into uh, getting uh, some of this stuff figured out specifically for the governance working group. Um, so uh, among all of the first journeys or, or first um, models of um, the task creation and, and advocates could definitely be uh, a focus on helping us um, with a lot of the maintenance that goes on in this repo. Um, uh, maybe even, uh, as mentioned earlier, decentralizing some of the um, uh, the responsibilities, right? Whether it's domains or other things. So um, I guess you know, this, this makes sense to leave this open as well, but maybe it will there'll be some overlap between issues as well coming up. I don't know if you have any comments there, Jason. That's that's where I don't have much to add to this one. I think the main reason we're keeping it open is we we decided that this would definitely make a lot of sense to fit into the flow that you guys have, especially yeah. with the journeys and task creation and everything you're describing. So with that, this is just more a reminder of some of the ideas we thought of, like, hey, there could be somebody to take notes, there could be somebody to do this, there could be somebody to do that, and what those roles might look like. Um, but as soon as something is implemented, we'll be ready to close this out. Uh, it's just more of a reminder at this point. Yeah, and I, I think it will be uh, really, really soon. <laughs> like I said, it has this pace. So, um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if you have any um, updates for us there, Haas, or beyond what you've already given. But I know you're you pretty much told us where you're at in terms of some of the last uh, pieces or components of that um, of that uh, journey's flow. So this is this is surreal in a lot of ways. You see, we've been talking about it for. I was just walking. I don't know if you can hear me all right. Just, just tell me. 
Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so I was just walking and I was thinking, of course, this is kind of not just it's, it's my, my work, but um, journeys or grants uh, with micro down are safer uh, because think about it this way. So, uh, one, and this, this, this might interest you. One anon dev might, for example, say that they might build some shit, and some shit would need like 5,000 stacks, for example. Um, they have to create a micro dev contract first and include Will, for example, or somebody else in the grants program that would descend if that person did not complete the milestones, but the, the money is there. <laughs> uh, and that's that, that, that's funny because um, it would it would be super difficult for people to abuse power and deny people of grants because of their reputation. But that's 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 one thing that I thought about. Also, the five day period in uh, in which people. Um, uh, have to wait to get paid. This is also like a, some sort of like a, um, a mechanism that prevents people from just like taking money and just like running away. It takes time and they have to wait. They have to exist for five days, which is typical for bad add ons. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Connie, for those insights. Yeah, no, it's interesting uh, the, the different ways, the different angles of it all. Um, and like I said, I think it's part and parcel to some of your design thinking that you know um, is being built in, uh, you know, even if it's just subtly. Um, so thank you, Connie Haas, uh, for that for that insight, the nuances. Um, but yeah, and thank you, Connie Jason, for for clearing up um, where we are in terms of. Uh, you know, uh, uh, all this governance working group stuff and, and, uh, and the, the overlaps with um, some of the journeys flow. Um, uh, we have uh, meeting notes clean up here that I know you um, has been here for a while and uh, dovetails what we, we talked about. It seems like all this stuff is recursive somehow relating to each other somehow, some way. But um, uh, I know this um, will be a big part of what, what goes on in the task creation, right, for for um, for folks that you know, uh, it also makes sense for compensation, right? Or smaller, the smaller grants. Uh, no, you've mentioned this before many times, uh, Jason. Um, so yeah, uh, let me know if we're missing anything there. But um, yeah, uh, not not really missing anything. Um, thank you for the work you did last time, like updating the table and everything else. And definitely, you know, saying if you need any help with doing those, that's great. Otherwise, we just got to source those remaining videos. And I know we were kind of waiting until that's available again. So. Um, as soon as we have that list or we have those things, I'm happy to jam on with you, uh, jam with you to get a majority of it done. But mm -hmm. I do think that the point of keeping track of this and the point of just knowing like what's done and what's not done does give us a nice way to test out test out some of those uh, task flows as well. Because I'd be like, hey, this call needs notes. Who wants to do it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. Agree. And it's beautiful for accessibility too, because uh, you know, a lot of folks have maybe looking for something to do and don't know that this stuff is here. So um, hopefully Journeys is a, uh, magnifies this in some ways beyond just a, a post here and there, um, every now and then. Um, so it's pretty exciting, uh, Haas. I can't thank you enough for, for being so heads down on that. I'm, I know it's gonna bring together a lot of disparate um, uh, you know, parts of the ecosystem in ways we probably can't even imagine. Um, and so, um, uh, uh, I have a, a brief update here. I had a meeting at midnight um, today uh, with Tomas Diaz from Fab Academy and, um, you know, trying to find some inroads into um, uh, not just, um, uh, you know, uh, context with this, this textile academy um, uh, uh, out of this uh, digital fabrication MIT network, which it'll be huge for uh, systems design and governance tying in um you know production fabrication distribution into uh uh you know uh, uh 
the systems design and and, and governance uh, um, uh, tooling, right? That that we're you know we're building out um, in, in advocates, and um, uh, we'll be able to apply right to local and different you know local regional areas, um, uh, in, in the context of uh, you know uh, production, fabrication, and distribution. Um, you know this this has a, you know a whole lot of uh, transformative potential in, in uh, as it relates to uh, bringing system design to public procurement, right? Uh, I guess to, to say it, um, you know, for lack of better phrasing. And so I'm um, really excited about getting prototypes done with that. And, um, you know, with all of these other stuff, all this other stuff moving uh, at a pretty surreal pace, um, you know, it was really exciting to get a, finally get a hold of Tomas, you know, things about you know many years in the making now. Um, after originally reaching out to him, and he's at the helm of this this global um, uh, uh, digital fabrication network. It goes along with these uh, city initiatives around sustainable development goals um, coming out of the UN, right? And so um, we're really excited to show him what we're doing. Uh, it looks like they're interested governance-wise. Um, as well, but um, uh, really, as it relates to some of our education efforts with the Longhouse, it's going to be beautiful to get some direct training of uh, the folks interested in our um, in our Longhouse efforts and in our indigenous uh, efforts um, uh, that goes alongside the prototyping and advocates. Um, this will be a, a, a very uh, 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 you know beneficial uh, connection, right? Uh, connecting us to, to other parts of of this um, this network uh, that can that can train help train us right get our hands on different tooling, um, get our hands on recipes for biomaterials and archiving and and different things like this of uh, um, that falls in that in that in that world. So this is something we've been excited about for a long time, and uh, you know I, I, this is an important connection and update that um, can probably be included here once we have some more tangible um, uh, uh, connections and. and uh, you know, maybe some uh, some of our first uh, meetings and things like this will be included here, along with um, some of our previous meetings with with Ron Eglash, who's uh, one of our first inspirations around open source in general, the transform potential, and um, digital fabrication and, and all of this. So, uh, yeah, I'll shut up now um, as we're two minutes over, and um, we have some backlog stuff here around uh, uh, meeting secretary and publisher, more stuff that, um, that goes along with task creation, I'd imagine. Um, a fireside chat uh, series topic here that we've discussed before um, and uh, has um, started to emerge in, in different um, dialogues with um, Colonel and the, and the Longhouse or Stacks Advocates in the Longhouse. Um, and uh, I have a recording here from our last uh, kernel session that um, uh, I can I can update this particular issue with, um, uh, along with some some good discussion with um, the folks from kernel and text form as well. So um, maybe that'll be good for, to add here. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, we, we'll probably have a, a fair amount of consistency with these firesides that will make this issue a little bit more active um, coming up. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll shut up. And maybe uh, connections with Tomas makes for good uh, fireside chat coming up as well, uh, whether it's with Colonel folks or or um, Stacks folks. So you know, these are some of the ways I'm thinking about this. I don't know if other folks have any um, comments or questions around some of these some of these issues. And we have more backlog stuff here as well. Uh, thanks to Jason keeping us nice and organized. Um, but more potential task creation stuff, of, of course. Oh. No problem. Man. And, and language, yeah, language and translations. This is one that uh, came up again recently for me. I was working with some teams that were just looking through like our documentation and uh, a lot of what we have in uh, just our, our city coin stuff. And it got me thinking about it again. You know, it's funny how almost all of our resources, there, there's a few people like I know we've got um, some people that do translate into other languages and do help us out with that. But I do think this is another strong area that would also just really help with inclusivity and help with um, diversity and like give more people a chance to do things. So that's, that's really all I'm going to say to it is there's, there's so much that um, can be done. And this is another one of those, just like the notes, it's a nice bite size kind of take it as you do it type thing that would fit well with the, with the task creation.
Yeah, yeah. It's made up a lot of our conversations and advocates too, you know, is, is um, Sleepy, who's pretty passionate about leading the way on some of those things and has taken some of that up, but um, also, you know, his full-time job. And I think, um, uh, you know, I had some trouble bringing folks together um, uh, who are interested, but maybe not available right away in terms of uh, some of the first teams around translation uh, coming together in the advocates. So I think journeys will be a big help for, for folks like himself and others that you mentioned that are that up for some of this, um, uh, this uh, you know, one at a time efforts, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, very concerned about uh, translation, which uh, I can agree with more right, in terms of how important it is to for everything not to be in English. But, um, but yeah, uh, thank you. What languages are everybody. like the most needed? Hmm. A good question. Um, yeah, de definitely a good question. And I think some of that really just comes to, um, you know, like what groups do we have around us or, or who could we help or having people like actually request that. Like but the stuff that came through to me recently was for Spanish. Um, so you have a lot of South America, especially like Brazil area are really starting to look into crypto, especially after what was going on in, in El Salvador up there. So as these different areas start to expand, we're, we're going to see different needs, uh, but I haven't heard any direct asks that I'm aware of, aside from this one I got recently. It just reminded me of this issue and it reminded me of something that we um, should be cognizant of because this this even came up back when we were doing our original like surveys and stuff. It was like we, it was hard to ask people questions because we didn't have multiple translations of those questions. Um, so just something to keep kind of back burner as like it, it, this would be really uh, nice to have. I think it, especially if we just have a system for creating it versus what needs to be tackled right at the moment. I think there's like quite a big like Korean community as well in Stacks. Um, but Spanish is interesting because I was listening to podcasts about proof of humanity. And there was and the guy was saying like in Argentina, basically they don't use their currency and all they use is crypto. And there are like signs everywhere, they accept crypto everywhere. So when Vitalik went there, he was like a rock star, apparently. Um, but it does goes to show like the adoption in uh, some of these um, countries where currencies collapse, perhaps, or, you know, just worthless. They adopt these, they have big communities, it seems. Yeah, I'll comment on that real quick, because I think we're in a fascinating time, right? Like when we look at the way technology has evolved and, and the way things are changing right now, like we have access to something we've never had before. And it's the level of connectivity that we have between all of us, all of us on the meeting here, all of us through email or text message or secure messaging or anything else. This new ability opens up so much more. So if you are a country or if you're in a situation where the typical system isn't working, you have access to a new system and now you have motivation to try it. And I think we're gonna see a lot of that um, over the next five, 10 years, just in my personal opinion. And I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think first world countries probably won't have issue, as much issues relatively to some of the developing countries. I think they will go, they will probably like fall first before the dollar falls. So I think those countries like Turkey, um, I don't know, some other countries too, could have to be gaining uh, adoption quicker over the next few years. Um, but I was, I was gonna ask a question. So language is important because the sort of the, the foundations value, like the core value of like, um, accessibility and is that is it because the accessibility and diversities and stuff is like sort of quite a big ethos of the foundation to have a diverse regions and um, participation around the world that's why like I, I, I heard like chapter programs kind of 
kind of important as well. You want to have in different part of the world, it's not just in the US. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know um, the exact stance of the foundation. I don't want to speak on their behalf or anything like that. But given the, the people I've worked with and the, and the general sentiment that I have is what, what we are using here is an open membership blockchain. Anybody can participate. So when you have that type of situation and now we're coordinating with people internationally across time zones and across oceans, it just calls that need out a little more to say like there should be mechanisms in place to be able to translate things to make things more accessible. Cool. Well, is, I, I'm glad you, you stopped us here, uh, Jason, on, on translation hero. You, you're commenting because um, yeah, uh, we talk about resilience in, in terms of diversity or, or in terms of uh, ecosystems growth, right? Um, yeah, translations seem to be extremely important for this, uh, even be able to get different perspectives into our ecosystem, uh, you know, having uh, options in terms of language becomes uh, very important, uh, you know, right along with uh, the visibility, right, to, to these perspectives, right, that you know, uh, could, <laughs> Uh, this much easier be drowned out right or, or not heard and so um uh yeah uh yeah maybe there's a little bit more attention you know we can pay to this beyond what we've already been uh you know trying to do with journeys or whatnot um uh, to really have it built into the advocate system design as well so that uh, it uh doesn't you know get left behind uh, you know but yeah Merrick, you see you coming on camera yeah, um, I've been thinking about this one kind of a lot, and I think there's a bit of a flow. It, it, it just exists in like barely in my head, but I'm going to try to, to, to voice it uh, of some, uh, you know, a, kind of a maybe a strategy that we can, or a, a technique that we can use to uh, create documentation in um, other languages um, by tying it kind of in with the upskilling. Um, and I know I haven't actually built the upskilling thing yet. Um, but once that is built, right, and we have this this flow of, of you know, you know, person comes in with an issue, right, says, hey, I need help with this, right, um, and then somebody comes in and upskills, um, and then you have maybe a third party who does documentation, um, um, and that would be a way to kind of like capture and build uh, documentation as we do the like upskilling sessions. And throwing in a language um, component into that, so you'd have then you'd have the person with the knowledge, you'd have the person with the question asking in another language, and then you'd also have the translator. Um, building some sort of system around that so that we can provide, you know, um, provide tech support kind of to other um, um, languages that don't have the documentation yet in their language. And then through that process, we are also building the documentation um uh in, in 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 the other language um at the same time uh yeah i, I don't know i've been thinking about that uh along with this like real-time um uh translation uh, video software that uh i talked about last meeting and haven't actually written up yet but yeah um yeah just that's some other thing about because it's yeah like we say it's super important right for uh you know horizontality of um, languages <laughs> yeah. yeah just to add one point uh, recently came up um in terms of language translation um something like i think just out of it's it's not related to here but um maybe it's a tool basically um i can't remember what was the situation that came up oh i remember now because one guy got hacked in one of our um Alex community, uh, he was like the the number one like member in the uh, ranking. Um, so he's quite an active participant, uh, but in Korean. So he's not like mostly in English. Like I don't see what he's saying. Uh, I don't see his as much as participation. But in Korean, like he's super active. Um, but, but I don't read Korean, so I don't know what he was saying. So. It was just a brief mention and Sleepy sent me this tool that you can incorporate into Discord and you can translate um, in Discord, like the comments. Um, just wanna 
put it out there to mention it. Um, everybody's awareness. I haven't tried it myself, but yeah, it takes a few steps to get it incorporated, I think. But um, yeah, there, there could be a tool that's more like the day-to-day conversation-wise, I guess, that could be, that could come handy just to make everybody aware. Um, Yeah, it, 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 yeah, I got this eerie feeling that you know, there's <laughs> these parallel universes in different languages, or <laughs> you know, this uh, equivalent of Frigia or Basin housing folks, you know, but we we don't know because we not can't read their 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 activity. And so now that it's a good point of um, of how you know language can inadvertently silo, um, uh, you know, fragment and silo the, the ecosystem. So thank you kindly. You are for, for mentioning that. I, I wasn't aware of this either. It seems like it could be a pretty good, pretty um, uh, productive implementation in terms of bringing folks together. Uh, so thank you. Yeah, on. so um, at Alex, we currently get some of the folks, um, the mod to translate into Korean. Uh, I think there's a version in Chinese as well, any like announcement. Mm. Um, so they don't, and I do see some people uh, are Chinese and they don't know how to speak English and they just go, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But um, but I can see they want to participate. But yeah. it's probably hard for them to have a, a conversation over like five minutes. Um, so they just do the basic. Yeah. Um, but then they go back to their Chinese channels to talk with their Chinese buddies, but they are a user of Stacks. Um, but yeah. Thank you, Tommy. You're wrong. No, yes, it's, I'm, I'm glad we stopped on translations. It, it's come up for uh, the longest now, and I think we, we get deeper into the weeds every time we, we discuss it. Um, so thank you, thank you. And um, yeah, I'm at, we can open it up for, for miscellaneous discussion or comment folk, any folks had um, before we close. Uh, but I want to respect folks' time as well. Thanks, Tommy, for um, you know spending all this time over with us, everybody. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a good one. Happy right. to everybody. Good and, yeah, good combos all around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good to see you guys. Have a beautiful rest of your day. See you guys. All right. Have a good one.